With me now is Avis Gilmore, who's the Regional Secretary of the National Union of Teachers. Welcome to Channel M today. Watching Hi. Nina's report there, you were sitting there shaking your head almost from start <laughs> to finish. But academies are a good thing. Mm. £19 million has been invested in the Health Academy, and children in Withenshaw are really going to benefit, aren't they? Well, how do we know? And how do we know that they wouldn't have benefited from just extra money being put into the school that they had? Simple as that, I suppose. Um, why do the unions in principle object to the academy schools? We have a bit of time now, so let, let's, let's set out your case, first of all. We object on two levels, really. One on the effect on education and one on the effect of our members as teachers in the academies. Academies are essentially private schools run by private companies but with public money. But so there's no accountability, no public accountability, there's no councillors involved, uh, they don't have to have teacher governors or staff governors, it's entirely who the private sponsor thinks should be the governing, uh, on the governing body. Parents will be fairly quick to say if the school isn't up to scratch though, won't they? They want their children to perform just well, like parents in any school. In fact, parents in the private sector are sometimes more hard on the school than parents in the public sector because they know they what they want their kids to do well. But parents will complain about the school if there's a problem, no matter which sector it's in. Um, one which will the keep the school on its toes, though, so the accountability absolutely. of the parents is there, whether it's an academy or an ordinary state school. But then you've got to look at how the academy is actually choosing its pupils. Uh, academies can set their own admission criteria, and it is absolutely a fact that the majority of academies have less uh, special needs pupils, statemented pupils, and they have a higher level of exclusions than the state schools. So they've, it's not the parents choosing the schools in terms of an academy, it's the academy choosing the pupils. And, and we have an objection to that as well. Okay, what about your objection on the basis of how it, they treat teachers? Uh, is it not just the same, whether you teach, if you teach in an academy, is it not just the same as teaching in an ordinary state secondary school? Academies have the ability to change the national, nationally negotiated paying conditions of teachers. So they can, if they wish to do so, drastically alter uh, both the salary and the working conditions for teachers. But the teachers presumably know that when they apply for the job in the first place. If your school's closing and it's being replaced by an academy, do you have a choice? You're either out of work or you're working in the academy. And that's the way that a lot of our members see, see the move. It's not that they've made an active choice to work in the academy. They don't have any option. They do uh, work, though, haven't they? Manchester Academy has just been described as, Ofsted, as by Ofsted as outstanding. They've just had their best ever GCSE results. They've got 63% of kids getting five A stars to C now. In an area where it was, you know, underfunded, deprivation, the prospect of going to university wasn't high. Parents are looking at these schools and saying they're terrific facilities... We welcome them, aren't they? But a huge number of state schools, local authority-run uh, schools, have also had a huge increase in exam results. It's not necessarily because it's an, uh, it's an academy. And if you compare academies with similar schools in the state sector, there is no huge difference between the two. You, it, it is not possible to say, uh, and there have been at least three reports done on this in the last 12 months, but it's not possible, they can't say that yes, academies have improved at a faster rate than similar state schools. So but the evidence is not there. We are in um, a time of economic crisis. Government money is thin on the ground and everybody wants schools, everybody wants everybody, everything to be invested in and, and it's not going to happen everywhere. So a bit of private money in schools has got to be good because the money is, otherwise isn't going to come from anywhere else. And, you know, if you, if you surround pupils and teachers with great facilities, you get great results. Well, you've just shown a clip about the, one of the new academies in Manchester uh, the, where the prime sponsor is actually the health service. So we've got the government putting money into a struggling health service, which then transfers that money to education. So that argument doesn't really hold up either, I don't think. A health service notwithstanding, other businesses and other charities putting money into schools is money that otherwise wouldn't be there. That is the case, but there's also, uh, there's also a lot of evidence and what, what may be interesting for people to do is look at the accounts of some of the academies because certainly some of the faith academies and uh, fundamental Christian academies have actually paid out more money to charities that they're related to than they have put into the school. OK, well, we could uh, debate this long into the afternoon, but we must leave it there. Avis, thank you very much indeed for your time. Thank you.